I play tons of video games on tons of different consoles, many of which that I own, and most of the time, I tend to avoid sports games. Why? Well, on Twitch, I do strive to beat games so we can move on to the next entry in the franchise, and with sports titles, that can be kind of redundant, because in many cases, they don't have win conditions, so my subscribers on Twitch tend to avoid requesting them. However, one viewer requested a video on the top 10 NES sports games, so massive shout out to Jim McClements5229 for taking the time to not only write a kind comment, but also in offering a suggestion. This is gonna be tough. I'm going to go through around 118 games with the intentions of racking and stacking them to find the top 10. Before I do that, let's establish some ground rules. For the purpose of this video, I'm not going to include a game that has sports mini games, instead focusing on titles that are inherently dedicated to their respective sport. Additionally, because this is the NES, I'm going to exclude any games that were released on the Famicom as well as the Famicom disc system. If you're watching this, my wrist hurts, my kids burn down my house, and my wife is angrily staring at me because I played 15 different baseball games in one sitting. But it was requested, and now I'm going to do it. These are my top 10 sports games on the NES. Track and Field is a game series that Konami pushed so far into the ground that by the time it reached the other end of the world, the next game was already out. It was on the MSX as Hyper Olympics, it was in the arcades, and it was also on the NES. Olympic games were a huge deal, and Konami made sure to provide us not only with a great visual experience, but a wide variety of Olympic games with the release of Track and Field 2. Track and Field 2 also has exclusives that are not present in the arcades, such as arm wrestling. The franchise has been featuring many titles, but it stopped doing that around 2008 with new international track and field on the Nintendo DS. From what my friends say, it's not that bad. I'm not one to play fishing games. It's a very, very niche market, and I'm sure I missed some in my search, but what I did do was go to Moby Games and tried to itemize the total amount of sports games and 175 came up. Like I said, I left out the Japanese exclusives and I think I knocked out the Brazilian, Taiwan, and UK releases because those consoles, or specifically those markets, had many more sports titles and I was surprised when I saw this game. The Blue Marlin is the sequel to the Black Bass, which I can't fucking stand. But holy cow, the Blue Marlin is the quintessential fishing simulator that I messed with on the NES. You can set your lure, you can endure a hellacious fight with the marlins, you can use active real life deep fishing techniques, it's just a really solid fun game and I suggest you give it a shake. This is another ultra game and when I bought it I figured it would just be a run of the mill roller derby game but I was wrong. Roller Games is a sports game mixed in with a sort of beat-em-up aspect, and watching this footage, you can see just how epic this game is, and it has no reason to be, it just is. It's got that classic Konami-era edgy music, the physics are great, and while it does carry a sort of harsh learning curve, and it is very unforgiving if you lose a life, if you happen to take the time to play this, and learn it, I think you might like it. This was the only game published by LJN that I could tolerate. And I sat through four Gigantor pieces of shit wrestling games for the WWF franchise. By the way, wrestling on NES, just avoid it. Nobody figured out how to do it, and just a bad time. Gotcha is a paintball game that meets Capture the Flag. You hold the controller in one hand, and you move left and right on the D-pad to get the flag. In the other hand, you hold your zapper. Yes, the zapper to shoot at enemies while you move. It's like Duck Hunt on crack, and I'm shocked that LGN managed to do one thing right. As far as I know, it's the only paintball game on the NES, so good job for them looking into a very niche market. Many companies tried to manage hockey games. I went through four total, and Blades of Steel stood out for many different reasons. The physics are nice, you can actually control your characters, and there's a fighting element that adds a little spice to the fun. Other games at the time struggled from really bad controls or really bad camera angles that made the controls 
irrelevant. I'm looking at you, Wayne Gretzky Hockey on the NES, you piece of shit. Blades of Steel did have many more games, the most recent being NHL Blades of Steel in 2000, but it wasn't that great, which is a shame, because in my opinion, this is the greatest hockey game on the NES. I played enough pool games over the weekend to make me never want to step in a bar ever again. After like 11 of them, I'm pretty sure my clothes smell like cigarette smoke. Going into this, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, how would they manage darts? Just ask Romstar, because they figured it out. One action controls the aim, another the angle, another the speed, and boom. You have a simple game that's fun and addicting. That's what many developers didn't realize at the time. You don't need a game to look like a sparkling Adonis's left testicle. All you need was to do one thing well, and this is a perfect example of that. Keep it stupid simple. Just good, clean fun. A vast majority of my views do come from folks who aren't subscribed to the channel, so this is my one time during the episode that I'll mention it. Please do consider subscribing. It's absolutely free, and you'll be able to see more amazing retro gaming content. I've got a lot planned for next year. The granddaddy of all light gun games in the arcade for Nintendo and on the console, Duck Hunt, is a classic and the replayability is seemingly endless. If you're like me, you give a kid a zapper, they can go for hours trying to beat their siblings and shooting ducks down. Me? I prefer the clay pigeon shooting. Everybody knows this game, and as a sports shooting game, I find it necessary to be on this list. I do want to give an honorable mention to shooting range. It might not be the best game, but it is also incredibly fun. Tennis is another sport that got a share a noble dose of nonsense on the NES. I played five different tennis games, and the one that stood out to me was Jim Connors Tennis. And when I tell you it has the most realistic physics on the NES in a sports game, I'm not kidding. Not only is this game fast, it's playable at that speed. One issue I tended to run into consistently, especially in baseball games, was that either the camera was total donkey shit or the players moved at the speed of smell. Sometimes that bled over to basketball and sometimes that bled over to tennis. But in Jim Connors' tennis? No. This game is epic. I strongly encourage you to try your skills at this one. Honorable mention to Rad Racket Deluxe Tennis 2 as well. I don't like volleyball, but I understand the principle of volleyball, bump, set, spike, right? That's why I have so many kids. I'm good at things in that particular order. Kings of the Beach stood out amongst its competitors. It's great. The controls are wonderful. You can do matches. You can train specific actions. You can play against your friends. You can do tournaments. You can also argue with the referee if you push select, which is hilarious to me. It's a simple game where you play volleyball that does not run like my crackhead neighbor from the cops. It's a good, smooth experience. Before we get to number one, I do want to mention that I have many other projects that I do work on, such as Series Slayer and the Ready Go Gaming Show. In my opinion, videos from within the last two years are my best, and my favorite series to veg out and watch is the Generations episodes. They cover every single console of their respective generations and also talk about the video game history of the era. But you're here for number one, so here it is. To say that I was impressed by this game is an understatement. I've played Tecmo Bowl. I don't like it. I hated it. The controls are nonsensical, the graphics are underperforming, and the game doesn't flow well. Tecmo Super Bowl, however, it was like day and night. Not only did we have authentic teams, we had authentic scheduling, authentic simulation, and a full season capability on the NES. That was not something you saw often. At the most, you had a small season and you needed a password to keep it. The gameplay is amazing, and those cutscenes, I love them. They're awesome. Beat a sack of touchdown, they're all phenomenal. This is hands down the best sports game on the NES. Out of all of them I played through my holiday weekend, this one made me stand up and put my hands on my hip like an impressed dad who's shocked their son isn't in jail yet. Thank you so much to Jim for taking the time to suggest this. I do read every comment, and I do try to respond to every comment, even the mean ones. 
I'm just a guy reliving your childhood. So please, do be patient. Join me on this journey to explore the evolution of video games. Down in the comment section below, feel free to tell me what our next top 10 should be. I do put polls up in the community page so that y'all can kind of give me some ideas that way as well. Uh, make sure you hit the like button as well so that this video gets a little bit more viewership. And as always, from my family to your family, good energy, good vibes. Fortify her up.